Hi there, welcome to Founders Connect, a new series I started on my YouTube channel where I interview your favorite tech startups, tech startup founders in Africa. I started this series because I'm very interested in tech ecosystem, the founders of co-founders of startups who are making products that actually solve real problems for each of us. I want to know who they are, learn about their journey, and also learn about the products or the businesses that they're actually building. So this is what I'm doing on Founders Connect. Today I'm going to be interviewing Nadaya, who is the co-founder of Andela and also co-founder of Eden Life. Hi, Nad. Hi, Peace. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for having me here. Thank today. you so much for being here. I can't wait to like learn all about your journey and everything you're currently building. Like, Same, I'm excited. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Peace Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful um i'm going to start with cliche question just tell me about yourself in like five words if you say who is nadaya one two three four five five words five words that describes like your essence who you are that, okay um good vibes good vibes that's two words already <laughs> <laughs> i'll count it as one that's okay. one phrase all right good vibes um technology music Mm. Um, I want to say art. What kind of art? Just any kind of art. I just like seeing people make things. Ah, you know? right. And, uh, hmm, what else? Just one more. One more? It's friends. I like, I like hanging out You're with friendly. friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice. Kind of friendly person. It's a good vibe, <laughs> tech, music, act, and friendly. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you remember your first um, introduction into tech? Like the first time you really saw me like a computer or a coder, and you're like, oh my god, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, I've had. I, I think I've had that that moment at different points mm. in my in my life for different reasons. So m my first introduction to computer science was in high school okay. and um, to get into good universities we needed to take just six courses and English was mandatory and I just didn't want to study anything else so I just picked all math courses oh. and then the, fi the final course that I was advised to pick if I wanted all math was, was a computer science course and that was the first time I did it and then um, shortly into, into that course I just realized that well like I could actually make computers like do a lot of things for me and and I think at different points in my life um, anytime I learn something new that computers can do I'm, I'm just as amazed mm. yeah very nice very nice whenever yeah. I learn something new there's this light that I feel like mm -hmm. it's very literal it's like oh my god this yeah. is so awesome is that how you feel with making <laughs> stuff too yeah sometimes it's just like wow this is it's literally incredible yeah, yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was reading up about you and I saw that, I mean, after school, um, computer science and business degree, you basically just started coding and then you built Fora mm -hmm. and then Andela and then Indian Life. I am very curious about the journey, the transition. So starting from Fora, how did that happen? <laughs> how did it stop? Yeah. Then we continued from Mandela and Indian, just like. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. So Fora was, um, an edtech company initially mm -hmm. started by my friends, uh, Ian, Ian. And um, the, the plan for Fora was to give Africans the opportunity to get great education without having to leave here. Right. So we're, we're building this platform to host North American course content um, for, for Africans. Now, um, after Ian, Ian started this, they needed a tech person, and um, I've, I had known E for about five, six years at the time, and mm. he's like, yeah, like, come, let's work on this thing now. I was just like, nah, I really, <laughs> I really, I really don't want to work in, in, in startups, you know? Right. Um, Did you have a full-time job then? No, yet. Yeah, this, was, this was literally before I finished, um, right. I, I finished from uni. So um, 
long story short, I eventually recommended an intern to them. And I kept checking in on that intern. And I just spent more time with them. And then I never left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I get this. Yeah, here I'm just like, uh, Yeah, because, because we, we, we're solving um, a very important problem. Mm. Like people who are not as fortunate as us to, to travel abroad to study, whether it's for financial reasons or just like different other reasons. Um, it made sense that something like that should exist. And so we built that for a while. And then um, while we were building that, we met Jeremy and Christina. Okay. Um, and they shared their vision for a new form of education mm -hmm. that would actually put money in the pockets of the people who are learning. Right. Um, and that was how we eventually developed the idea for, for Andela. And then we built that. We ended up um, building a massive pipeline. So did you guys here. stop for uh, because of Andela? Or you had started saying, you know, maybe this is not working or impacting as we want it to, and then a then opportunity came. Or how was the transition? A, a bit of both. So we, we, we're looking at what we're building at Fora, and like wh while it was interesting, I think it's one of those ideas that was actually before its time. Mm. Like, like for example, internet bandwidth was actually not that great back in 2013 here. Right. Um, and so actually, like all our our team members from from Fora, e, Ian, Bryce, myself, um, Jeremy, Christina, like we, we Voltron. <laughs> and, ma <laughs> and made and made uh, Andela, yeah. Amazing. And so I saw I was reading an article of yours, um, and I think that was in twenty seventeen article about mm -hmm. why you still believe in Andela mm -hmm. and how it was a leap of faith. Yeah. And there was a phrase where you said that uh, when people ask you why you're still in Andela, you say because let me let me quote it actually because we understand that the way to truly transform a nation is through innovation, and it sounded mm -hmm. like I'm going to be here for like a long time and still be actively doing the work. Mm -hmm. But yet, he did now. So I'm yeah. wondering, yeah, basically what happened. Yeah. So I I am very much still active and doing the work. Right. Um. And so when I said that thing, right? Um. I mean, I was trying to sound clever, but the <laughs> the crux the crux of it is that for our country or our continent to be the way that we all want it to be, people have to make things. Mm. You have, to, you have to make things. And there is no um, greater equalizer, there's no greater tool to lower the barrier to entry as much as technology. Right. And so anything, anything that has to do with um, technology and getting technology into the hands of people to do things that would improve our day-to-day -day lives, I'm 100% in by default. And so w with Andela, we ended up building, um, so I led, I led, I led the um, learning, and training, learning and, and training team, yeah. And the learning infrastructure that we built has powered the learning of over 1,500 engineers at Andela, mm -hmm. and then even more than 80,000 people outside of Andela through our Andela learning community. And like, that is a machine that is, that is going to keep running. Um, Andela is going to literally be the biggest engineering talent platform in the world, period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's just, it's it's just what it, is. It, it is inevitable. And having, having set that up, and like I know that this thing is, is, is going to be running on autopilot, I figured what else can we do in our immediate environment? Like if I, if I consider my life's mission to be 10 x in the quality of life here, mm then what are, what are all the things that make our life here difficult? And one huge one is the way we receive domestic services. Yeah, so um, that is when we decided to build um, Eden Life Prosper Silver Knight. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So it means you're going to keep building stuff. Forever <laughs> till I die. <laughs> that's, that's, that's such an amazing insight. Yeah. Right, so you build and we start working and like, okay, there's another problem that I need to solve to make it the kind of life I want to live. Yeah, like, like you know, I think that is a problem need to finish. Like, <laughs> yeah, both personally and, and, everywhere. and everywhere. Interesting. So, but Eden was your idea, right? Um, you, when you came back in 2014 and you figured, oh my God, Lagos is such a shitty place. Terrible place. And what can I do to improve it? <laughs> um, how did you know or when did you decide that you were going to do it with Prosper and Slay, and why? Okay, um, so sometime, sometime in late 2018, um, all three of us, so Prosper, Seelma, and I worked and lived together mm. at different points in time. And, you know, something unique about both Prosper and Seelm is that they, they are two of the most talented technologists mm. in our ecosystem. Like, Prosper is an incredible um, yeah. engineer and developer. Siom is an incredible product designer, and product person. 
both of them could leave Nigeria today mm. and get like the best paying tech jobs in the world. But for some reason, um, while a bunch of our other friends and colleagues um, were migrating or looking for ways to migrate, they still remained bullish on living here. Mm. So sometime in late 2018, we started talking about, well, like we, we, we all used to complain that living here kind of, kind of sucks sometimes. And at the same time, we're saying that we want to stay here. So like, <laughs> How do you make what, are we, what are we going to do to actually enjoy staying here? Yeah. And we started doing a bunch of research in urban development. We actually wanted to go into urban development and start building like new settlements that would function the way things should oh, function. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, exactly. Um, but a, ma a major blocker to that was, was capital. Like you need like literally nine figures to, like <laughs> <laughs> to even build prototypes. So um, we, we flipped the question around and we asked, well, if, if we're trying to, you know, make life easier and more enjoyable here and hard infrastructure is needed and a new kind of soft infrastructure is needed, can mm. we start building the soft infrastructure today? Mm. And that's how we just decided that we're going to focus on domestic services and building the platform to automate that for people. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So what has been your biggest lesson so far? both as Oof. an Andelan and mm -hmm. now being the CEO of another startup. So you've gone from CTO to co-founder and director of training to now CEO. Yeah. At each step, what did you learn that was really pivotal for each of the role? Hmm. Um, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I would say um, the biggest thing that I, le I, I learned in my, in my transition from being like more the person just like building technology mm -hmm. to the person who is enabling others learn how to build technology was learning how to be very clear mm. about how to transfer mental models. Mm. For example, like you know, you know marketing so well. Like there's so, there's so many things that you would do intuitively without thinking yeah. about it. And so if you, if you met someone today who wanted to learn marketing, you would have to go really deep to like bring those things and out break and, it down. and present it in a way that that person can understand. Yeah. And then if you have to do it for a thousand more people, you have to figure out more creative ways to do that. That is not just depending on your time. Mm. Um, so I learned, I learned how to be very clear um, about, uh, about how to transfer mental models and also how to build um, how to build structures that will enable like people work in groups asynchronously. Mm. Um, so I would say that was the big the big um, transition there. And now from doing that to being CEO, um, I would say the main the main difference. So actually, like and Andela prepared me a lot for this. There's a lot of responsibility, a lot of learning, a lot of like people management, a lot of like creative structure around things, a lot of entrepreneurship. Um, but now the main thing that's different is I worry about money. <laughs> 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 that's, that's, the, that's the main thing. Like I never, I never, I never had to, I never you had to worry about, the work. yeah, I never had to worry about money at Andela. Like Jeremy Johnson, our CEO was, was just a wizard with, with, with money and he was really, really good with that. So because he pulled that way, the rest of us didn't have to worry about it. But now that, that is my worry. So I think, I think of my job today as um, three main things. It's like making sure the vision is clear to everybody, mm. making sure we have the right people, the right mm. team, and then making sure we have money in the bank to keep doing what we have to do. Interesting. Yeah. So making sure the vision is clear comes from your learning from Mandela, just being able to transfer mental models, yes. right? Um, hiring. What's your hiring philosophy? How do you get the best people on your team? Ah. How do you poach the best people to poach. your team? <laughs> well, um... I think first and foremost, to to hire well, you need to have a compelling vision. Mm. I think I think a compelling to hire good people because, at the end of the day, what do good people want? First and foremost, good people want to work with other good people. Yeah, <laughs> good people want to work with other good people, and and good people know that their time is expensive, mm -hmm. so they want to spend their time doing things that are worthwhile. Mm. Um, so I would say first and foremost, like it's very, it's very important for us to make sure that our vision is clear and then we, we, we share that vision indiscriminately. Mm. 
and we pay attention to the people who are attracted to it. Um, sometimes we compel people to be attracted to it. But, <laughs> um, but I, I would say in general, we look for people who have good energy. Good we, vibes. We, yes, and, and good vibes only. Uh, you don't want bad vibes in your company. <laughs> um, we look for people who have good energy. We look for people who are good at what they do. And then we also look for people who are hungry. Mm. Like people, who, yeah, you're, you, you are good at what you do, but you recognize that there are levels to this year. Like, you know, there, there's so many things to learn. There's so many things to do. There's so many things to achieve. So we look for those kinds of people. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, Nigeria has been so tough this year. And I pity all the CEOs <laughs> that have had to motivate and motivate and motivate <laughs> people from coronavirus to NSAS. It's like, we've had it. How's it been like for you? Like you, you have these good people on your team, but I'm sure that as with everybody else on you, it's been a lot of emotional turmoil. Yes. So how have you managed that? Um, frankly, the, the Eden team are the real MVPs here. Mm. Like they, they have been such troopers because even um, when, when the coronavirus lockdown actually hit, I wasn't here. Mm. I, I was in San Francisco and I was stuck there because the airports were closed and I couldn't come back. And I was, I ended up being stuck there for about five months. Wow. Yeah. And the team here just held it down. Like we had to, we had to make a lot of um, very quick changes to some of our processes. We had to, we had to have a different kind of working schedule so that we can minimize the amount of people that come into yeah. um, physical interaction with each other. Um, and at the same time, we had to make sure that our customers, who needed us more than ever, because now they couldn't go out to do anything, we had to make sure that those people were still satisfied. And, and the, team, the team did incredibly well in doing all that. We, we encouraged each other. We spent more time together. I was sending videos every week to the <laughs> team um, to encourage them. Um, I think it brought us closer as a team. So yeah, like it, was, it was a very difficult and um, hard period, but I think the team is now closer as a result. We all trust each other more. And most importantly, we, we strongly believe that we are building something important because we saw the um, way that people actually needed us to function and do our jobs well. So it became even more essential. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that was good. And then, and then we had NSARS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one is, is like, is, it's, a very, uh, it's a very personal thing too because for anyone in tech, like, I don't know, SARS is like the evil twin of what bread and butter means. It's like, as, as long as you're a tech person, you're going to experience, you're going to some experience way. SARS. Like these police people, like, they're going to harass you, they're going to extort you. Um, and in some cases, they will get violent with yeah. you. And since the Andela days, we, we have had multiple instances of like, we go to Afropolitan Vibes at Freedom Park on a Friday evening. And then on the way back, like people get abducted and taken mm. to the police station. We have to like figure out how to get them out. So this is this is an issue that we have continued to battle behind the scenes. Um, and when when the protests actually actually happened, there was a week where frankly I work. We're just like, yeah, we're all just going to take this couple of days oh. off like, during the curfew because we all we all need time to just like relax and breathe. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I'm still I'm still. I try to find the silver lining in things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that sort of consciousness is good for all of us because I think now, like everybody is thinking, w what are the kinds of things that we can do to make here, to make our lives here better, which includes ending SARS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. So still on hiring, right? Because uh, I read a bit about you just to know, like, okay, uh, what do I need to like ask and push more? Yeah. And I saw something about when you were heading the learning team at Andela, mm -hmm. um, at some point about 80% of your team left. Yes. And it was because you re recognized later on that it was because they didn't have like a career or they couldn't see their career path in the current role. Mm -hmm. Now you had that learning mm -hmm. and I'm sure you figured out in Andela, but mm -hmm. have you translated that learning to the kind of people you will hire at Eden mm -hmm. to make sure that they stay for a longer time? Yeah. So, um, it still keeps me up at night. <laughs> it still keeps me up at night. Yeah, because because yeah, like you hire you, you hire really good people. Remember the, the, the things we, we spoke yeah. about. You hire you have people who are good at what they do. People who have like really good energy, um, and people who also recognize that they they need to grow and they want to grow. Yeah, and people with that sort of mindset need to continue growing. There mm -hmm. is there is no ceiling. Mm -hmm. 
So as a company, you either have to figure out how to continuously create avenues for them to, to grow and explore their abilities while, of course, doing valuable work for the company. Mm. And, if you, and if you cannot do that, then they have to go like pursue mm. their own passions elsewhere. And so um, we are very, very conscious of it, but we also have, I think I have come to accept that that time for almost everybody will come. Will come. Every, everybody has that point where they feel like, okay, like I would love to do something different. And as a company, I, I, I feel like it's our, it's our responsibility to make sure that whenever that time comes, we actually support those people mm. in like doing, like continue to do the things that they want to do. So yeah, it keeps me up at night. <laughs> yeah, but I also I also don't know if I, if I, if we want to keep employees for like ten years. Mm. You know, so yeah, there's more stuff to build. Go build. Go build stuff. <laughs> Interesting. So generally, how how is Eden going? Adoption, mm -hmm. the making money mm -hmm. generally. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'd say we are we are pre-product market fit. Mm, okay. Um, for for people watching, I'll just summarize what what Eden is. Yes, please. So we we are the one place where you can get all your domestic services. Mm. So currently, um, on Eden, you can get your food, your cleaning, your laundry, and in the future, we're going to keep stacking on more services. Nice. Basically, we'll get to the point where for anything that has to do with your home. You can get all of those services with a click of a button. And the services that you get are going to be reliable, they're gonna be of high quality, and they're going to be safe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the way Eden works is on a recurring schedule. So if, if you signed up for Eden today and you wanted food, laundry, and cleaning, our tech would automatically generate a schedule of services for you for the rest of the year. And like every Monday, your food shows up, your laundry bag gets picked up, your laundry bag gets returned so to you. So you don't have to worry hours. about it. You just set it and forget it. Literally, yeah. Um, so, as you can imagine, it's pretty novel. Yeah. Um, and so, people, people are. We have noticed that people are starting to talk about Eden a lot. Like yeah, we okay. get mentioned on Twitter every every once in a while. And then, why people are signing up, and they realize that it's a monthly subscription and they have to pay monthly. But nobody in the history of Nigeria <laughs> has ever paid for their food on the first day of the month for the rest, <laughs> for of, the rest the month. of the month. <laughs> Um, and uh, so, so I think I think the idea is still in in, in its early um, phases, um, and I would say on the on the business side, we're also learning a lot. Right. Because initially, when we started, what we wanted to build was just this platform that was going to is basically a customer experience layer, like all the scheduling, all the coordination of the services, all the feedback management all the quality assurance which is going to be handled by, by Eden, while the actual services are delivered by third-party businesses. Right. Um, we have come to realize that the bar here is really low. <laughs> <laughs> the bar here is really low. And, and it is not because people want to set a low bar. It is because people do not have either the right training or the right expectation setting, or they don't have the right tools and equipment. Right? right, and like if you, if you're a small business, you're trying to worry about how you're going to get customers. You're worrying about how you're going to finance your business. You're worried about how you're going to pay employees. Like, th there is so much, yeah. so there's no ecosystem that supports a lot of these smaller businesses. Yeah. So, as a result of that, we realized that for people to get those services in, in a reliable, high quality, quality and safe way, we have to actually get involved right. in how these services get delivered. So you have to start cooking. You have to start doing. In some cases, in some cases, we have to manage the, the whole thing from end to end. Um, as in the case of food, we're actually in the in the middle of setting up a an amazing food operation. It's actually good. <laughs> <Chocolate>. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. Yeah, it's, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, we've been testing for the last two months. It's going to be incredible. But for things like cleaning and for things like laundry, we're still we're still um, exploring how how we can get involved in raising the bar of the services without also like getting too much in the weeds where we now have to like run different companies under one company but we'll see how, how it evolves so would you say that has been the biggest challenge so far having to then now get involved in the actual operation 120 percent that has been that has been the hardest and you didn't see it coming we never saw this part <laughs> coming we didn't see this part coming <laughs> yeah we're just like yeah we, we, we're gonna build this amazing experience and like we'll set the standards and we'll like facilitate everything it's gonna be good and it worked mm. like it worked but like if we're going to go from being good to great or to awesome to the best yeah we have to get involved interesting 
Okay, so just a, a bit away from Eden for a bit, right? Um, you spent seven years in Canada. Mm-hmm. You left at 16, mm-hmm. right? How did that seven years shape who you are today? Oh, huge, huge. Um, I made so many friends. I learned so many things. I explored so many different cultures. Um, yeah. And Is there one significant thing that you said, if I wasn't in Canada for this long, um, to get this experience, I w- most likely have been turned out like totally different. Oh, absolutely. So, um, I, I I went to the University of Waterloo in Canada. It's like the best engineering school there. Yeah. And um, I would say that was the turning point. Mm. Because, I mean, um, Blackberry was founded by a Waterloo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and a bunch of a bunch of other interesting companies. So it was a very entrepreneurial school. Mm. The if you were in engineering or if you were in computer science, w- which I was in, and you go to Waterloo, like it is almost expected that you that, will, you, that you will start something. Yes, and even if you didn't want to start something, you are around a lot of people who are starting things or thinking about starting things, and I think it just unlocked a whole another level of what I believe was possible because like sometimes. Sometimes when you see people build amazing things, you, you forget that they're also people just like you. Mm. You forget. And then wh- when you're actually in the same rooms with those people and you realize that, hold up, Second. this person gets hungry, <laughs> this person eats, this person sleeps, this person like does everything that I do as a human being. The only difference is one day they decided they're gonna start something. Mm. I think it unlocks a whole realm of possibilities. So I would say that was like a massive moment. Amazing. Mm. What has been the, who, which three people have had the most impact in your life so far? Oh, this is a hard, this is a very hard question. <laughs> because three. because no, ma- no, no matter who I mentioned, it would be unfair. <laughs> yeah, it would be unfair. So, okay, three <laughs> that comes to your mind faster. There are at least, <laughs> there are at least 50 people I can list right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really cannot answer that question. I mean, like, um, when I think about um, my classmates from school, mm. when I think about the people um, I played sports with in, 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 my, in my college days, when I think about my um, Andela co-founders, when I think about the engineers that I worked with, around, like, all of these people have shaped my life in one way or the other in memorable ways that i can mention all their names so i don't have i don't have okay i don't have three people then um, i have one more question and then we just like a lightning round so i mean i think it might have been easier for you raising money i don't know but how was it like when raising money for eden did you guys use your own capital or is it like hey investors (laughs) already come to Andela, just come and help me put it in this new business Yeah, uh, so yeah, at first we used our own money. <laughs> we, um, we, did, we did use our own money that we had saved up um, because we, we planned a little bit for it, thankfully. Okay. Um, and then we, we got some money from, from friends and family oh, okay. as well. Um, that was very, very encouraging because a lot of our former colleagues were the ones who, who put that money in. Oh. Yeah, like these were people who just worked with us, and they were like, "Yeah, we think yeah, we think it. we think you're reasonable individuals, <laughs> and the, the the idea sounds like something that needs to exist." And so and so they all they all funded it. That was great. Um, and right now, like the next round of funding that we did was, I think it was easier to get in the door because of what we had built at Andela. Mm-hmm. Um, but I th- I think it was also tough. To, to actually get capital from people. Number one, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> COVID, COVID punched everybody, everybody in the throat this yeah. year. Um, and then the, the second thing is also the kind of idea. Mm-hmm. It's also the kind of idea that we are, that we, that we are building. Um, FinTech is really hot right now. I think, I think it, it is easier to get access to capital if you have a good, a good team, if it's in FinTech. Um, but with, with things like Eden, you, you don't really see it until it has happened. Mm. Um, because these, this is a more traditional industry that hasn't been really hit by technology yeah. yet. And like we are going to hit this thing with technology <laughs> so hard. So um, I think the, the people, the, the people who, who backed us are also people who are 
very visionary like we are and they these are people who believe that we can suspend gravity mm. because we believe we can like we'll do we'll do whatever we have to do to make this thing work so um the kind of investors that, that we found are, are people like this which is like rare yeah so yes i think i i think it was it was actually harder than we imagined that it would be but we shall did it <laughs> <laughs> No, I cannot. I cannot <laughs> disclose that. I had to try. <laughs> I, I had to try because it's not public knowledge. I'm like, will I get it here? Uh, Prosper will just text me now and say, "How far?" I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had to try. Also, yeah. also, uh, we have to round up now. We've gotten to like way past thirty minutes. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to do like lightning round questions because I like to end with a very what's the word? free, fun, good vibes kind of way because there's been serious conversation. So I just yeah. ask you questions and just reply with like real quick. Okay. Favorite color? Sentence. Red color. <laughs> <laughs> it's not supposed to be hard. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an answer. Yeah, okay. Favorite okay. city? You don't have one too. No, I don't have, I just like everywhere. <laughs> 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 so there's no... So there's no one place you're like, oh my god, I think I want to visit here every other year. No. You just want to like keep going to like this. As long as places. my friends are there, I'm down. <laughs> I'll go there. Okay, is there somewhere that you want to travel to that you haven't been to yet? Yes, China. Why? Because a really good friend of mine who lives there. <laughs> friends. And I, and I haven't I haven't <laughs> seen him in a while. Yeah. Oh, okay, so when you're not working, what are you doing? Um, playing music. I play the bass guitar. Are you going to release another mixtape soon? Like five year anniversary. I would, I would love to. I would love to. Yeah. If you know any other artists looking to co-create, um, I, I would love to meet them. Cool. Um, do you do cereal before milk or milk after cereal? Are you a cereal killer? I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> 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 I don't eat cereal. <laughs> same, same, same answer. <laughs> also, there's no coming back from that. So I'm just yeah. ending here. Do you have any last words for my listeners? And more importantly, people who want to solve problems like you want to solve problems, like upcoming entrepreneurs, last words. Um, yeah, well, I mean, thank you. Thank you for, for listening to us today. And just, just keep building. Just keep building things. Just keep making things. Like everything that we see in the world, we met it here. And mm. most, most of these things, people put them here. And so we can also put stuff here that will make lives better for everybody. So you just do that. So keep making things. Keep making things. Amazing. It was such a lovely conversation with you, Nat. Thank Thanks. you for, first of all, granting me this access to sit down with you and then really honestly answer my questions. I have really learned a lot. And I'm sure you guys have to say, and if you watch this video to the end, you are such an MVP. I'm so glad to have you on my channel. Remember to subscribe if you haven't yet and there's a bell notification button, click on it so the next time I have a video with another tech founder or all of my other videos, you'll be one of the first to know. Thanks again for being here. Peace out.